Welcome to Rob Schmidt tonight. No clear way to illustrate that Republicans are getting hosed with the McCarthy Biden debt agreement than by comparing the responses from both parties. Right now, Republicans who support this deal are visibly insecure as they attempt to normalize and perpetuate pandemic emergency levels of spending into the future in this country. Convincing you that today in a relatively healthy country with low unemployment and no crisis, it makes sense to spend 50% more money than we bring in every single year. It doesn't make any sense. It is fiscal insanity and it's about to continue on probably forever. Right now, the D.C. machine is collectively holding its breath, giddy they might actually pull this madness off and pass a post-pandemic spending agreement that keeps the United States splurging around $2 trillion more every year than we bring in. Democrats are being very cautious not to say anything to ruin this incredible moment that they have. No sudden moves. Don't jinx it. Listen to Biden's economic advisor earlier today, full of forced modesty. How do you describe what literally we're looking at in terms of legislation now before the American people? Well, good. I would describe it as a good, fair deal that reflects the realities of divided government that helps preserve what has been an incredibly strong set of progressive accomplishments over the last two and a half years. Mm -hmm. He's so excited he can barely contain himself. The government's recent explosion in size, power and control is on the cusp of being made permanent in the United States. The limited government our founders knew was crucial to the survival of this country disappearing before our eyes. And about 80% of our elected leaders, including more than half of the Republicans we have in Congress, either endorse this or are totally complicit, including Kevin McCarthy, who has the very difficult task of spinning this train wreck he's selling you, spinning the fiscal demise of this country as a huge win for his party, which is a tough task to a constituency that generally hates Washington and the spending. These are major victories. I understand people get upset about walking through a debt ceiling, but this is a House, a Senate, and a president. I think when you read the Wall Street Journal, you read the New York Post, you sit back and listen to a lot of economists, they'll say, this is the strongest debt ceiling we ever had. And if I compare it to when Republicans were in the majority, when they had the House, the Senate, and the presidency, they didn't cut anything. They just added more money. Well, all of that sounds very nice, but it ignores the fact that Washington just used an emergency to justify spending 40 percent more money every single year. And now that it's over, the emergency intends to stay at that rate. In 2019, the U.S. government spent four point four trillion dollars. COVID hit that skyrocketed. Six point eight was as high as it got as it got in 2021. And now both parties have a post COVID agreement to spend just about that much from now on, around $6.3 trillion a year like we did in 2022, about $2 trillion more than we did before the pandemic. And to distort this reality, Republicans are bragging about repealing $1.9 of the $70 billion that they're going to give to the IRS. You're supposed to be proud that the IRS is only getting $68.1 billion and not $70 billion. What a win for Republicans. More telling than anything is that there's almost no opposition to this deal from the far left. Doesn't that tell you a lot? Where's AOC? Mouth shut. Where's Ilhan? Mouth shut. But there's a chorus of rage from the few actual conservatives that are left in Washington. There's a reason our Democrat colleagues support this. There's a reason that Mitt Romney supports this. There's a reason that Bill Crystal supports this. It's all the same stuff. It allows the OMB director to ignore this mandate whenever she deems necessary to do so. A trillion is $8,000 for every man, woman, and child in the United States. So at $31.4 trillion, you're talking about every one of us walking around with a $250,000 extra mortgage. How could you more successfully kneecap any Republican president than to take that issue out of his or her hands. While you were celebrating Memorial Day, this town was cutting another crap deal that's going to put you more in debt with no real changes whatsoever. 